Mathematical Improbability of Evolution. I have titled this The Mathematical Improbability. I'm almost willing to say The Mathematical Impossibility. But they try to say, you know, probability is given enough time and given enough collisions and combinations, there may be a probability. But we're going to show you how small the probability is. Why is the study of mathematical improbabilities important? I personally believe it's one of the strongest evidences for special creation. It's the mathematical improbability that highly complex life could have arisen by chance. Random processes generate disorder rather than order and confusion instead of information. Now what I'd like for you to do is I would like for you to stand up. I would like for you to get out a coin. What I would like for you to do is be honest with me now. I would like for you to flip the coin and put it on your hand. Those of you who have heads remain standing. Those of you who have tails be seated. What was the probability of you flipping a head? One out of what? Two. With 10 people in this room, approximately five should be standing. Okay, let's do it again this time. Clip it up. Uh, you know, everybody who is sitting down should stay sitting down. So the probability, if we'd had eight, the probability of those remaining after two flips would be two. Okay, there would be two standing right now. Flip again. Don't look at it. Do this. You got heads? Okay. Did you see? Now that's amazing in this small sample how accurate. But what I'm saying is there is mathematical probability and it's a very exact thing. One out of two, your probability is if you flip heads, chance of flipping two heads in a row is one out of four. Your chance of flipping ten heads in a row is one out of two times two times two times two times two ten times. One and two to the ten or one in one thousand and twenty-four. So I'd be plenty safe to say, okay, if you'll get me a dollar for the chance, and if you flip ten heads in a row, you'll win five dollars. Well, I'd make all kinds of money, because the chance of you doing this is one out of a thousand. I'm not a gambler, but we're going to show you why you shouldn't gamble. But even in, is it Yahtzee, the game with ice? What's the probability of rolling a six? One out of six. What's the probability of getting two six in a row? One out of six times six, one out of thirty-six. The probability of flipping five sixes in a row, which I think they call Yahtzee, is one in six times six times six times six times six. There was one in five sixes, which would be one in seven thousand seven hundred and seventy-six. Combination lock like a master lock. Supposing some kid who has a locker near you knows you've got something in your locker and they want to steal it. And so at night they come into the school and they try to figure out your combination. What's the chance of them getting the first number correct? One in 40. What's the chance of them getting the first two numbers correct? Probably the first one number is 1 out of 40. The problem getting the second one is 1 out of 40. So it's 1 out of 40 times 40. What's the chance of them getting all three numbers correctly? Well, that chance is 1 in 40 times 40 times 40, or 1 in 64,000. If you did that one a minute, it would take him 44 days to reach that number. Well, by that time, hopefully, You'll be back in school and see him doing it, or maybe the campus security would get him at night, or something like that. So there's a very slim chance of somebody getting your combination right without a whole lot of tries. What about your telephone number? Supposing some baby in a, a faraway town starts punching number, takes the cradle off the hook, puts his ear, and starts punching number. What's the chance of them getting your telephone number correct? Well, what's the chance of them getting the first number right? 
Well, it's really, I'm going to say here 1 in 10, but it's really 1 out of 12 in reality because they couldn't hit the star or the pouncing. But let's say they know enough about numbers. So what's the chance of them, if they know a number, of hitting the first number right? The chance of getting the first digit right? 1 out of 10. Okay, what's the chance of getting the second digit right? 1 out of 10. So the chance of them getting your telephone number correctly is 1 in 10 to the 10th. What 1 in 10 to the 10th means 1 in 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. Tell me how many count. Is that 7 times 10 times 10 times 10? Or 1 in, in a 1 followed by 10 zeros. So you can feel very safe that nobody's going to wake you up in the middle of the night just by dialing the telephone number by chance. Mathematical probabilities are exact. They're mathematically determined. People know what they're doing. The chance of winning the California lottery used to be, and I calculated it out, it turned out exactly what they said, 1 in 18,009,640. That's what it used to be. Now it's even harder yet. They've got it so it's even a lower probability, but they've got some intermediate prizes to kind of keep people hooked. The lottery, that type of thing, is just, it's a tax on the poor is what it is. Poor people fall for that, but they're always geared so that you know only a certain percentage of the money that goes in comes out. So there's, your chances are so small of winning. On the example I gave you last about the chance of a child to dial your telephone number correctly, to give you a feel for what 1 in 10 billion is, if a child was able to dial a number one time a minute, 10 hours a day, but at one time a minute, it would take 50,000 years. Let's give you another example just to give you some understanding of probabilities. If you had these flashcards, arranged any order. Now I have in mind a predetermined telephone number that these flashcards represent. What's the chance of you getting, I've got numbers here, zero to, to nine. What's the chance of them getting the first digit right? One in 10. That card's removed now. So what's the chance of getting the second one in nine? So your chance of getting 10 flashcards numbered in the correct order is a little different than when you have you know, all numbers available. This is what's remaining. Your chance is 1 in 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4. And if you've ever had the mathematics, it's called 1 in 10 factorial. Which, If you multiply 10 times 9 times 8 and so forth, the chance of getting these arranged in a predetermined order is 1 in 3,628,800. That's 10 cards. 1 in 10 factorial. Now, the chance of getting a 100 card correctly your chance decreases as the number of components increasing. So for example, if I had 100 cards to range in order, the chance for 100 to be in order would be 1 in 1, 1 in 100 times 99 times 98 and so forth out, or 1 in 100 factorial, which is one chance in a 1 followed by 158 zeros. That's a big number just for a hundred flashcards arranged in order. Now, let's talk about life itself. What about life? This particular odds, just on your flashcards, could never happen in the time and space universe. And we will show that in a minute as to why that could never happen, even a hundred flashcards. But life is far more complicated than 100 flashcards in order. The mathematical probability of a protein, the simplest protein arranging themselves in order, is 1 in a 1 followed by 450 zeros. That's just a protein. A living cell, though, is far more complicated than a protein. A protein is just sort of a building block. The chance of a living cell coming together is 1 in 10 to the 40 thousandths. 
why is this improbable, or shall we say, for all practical purposes, impossible? It has been estimated that there are 10 to the, the 80th particles in the entire universe. That's a, a 1 followed by 80 zeros. The longest estimate I've ever heard for the age of the universe is 30 billion years. 30 billion years is 10 to the 18th seconds. That's 30 billion years. How old is the Earth? I think it's 6,000 years. I'll show you why later on in the class. The evolutionists have to have long periods of time. Remember, it's built on foundations, eons of time and chance. And we're right now trying to destroy the chance aspect. Later, of course, we'll destroy the time element. Now, let's say that these 10 to the 80th particles would collide. A trillion times a second is 10 to the 12th collisions. If you multiply this together, 10 to the 80th particle over 30 billion years, trillion times a second, which is a lot of collisions a second. So anything with a probability of less than 1 to the 10 to the 110th power is impossible, so I say, to occur even if the universe was 30 billion years old and if you had a trillion collisions a second. So that's why you couldn't even arrange the flashcards if you were you know, doing that. That's the chance of arranging that order is, uh, I mentioned, was 1 in 10 to the 158. A protein molecule, 1 to 10 to the 450th. And, and this is all that could happen. Now let's try to break this down into things that are mathematically not so difficult to understand. Let's take this, the probability of life forming by chance. It's more likely to take a box full of wire and plastic and parts, shake it for a billion years, and form a computer. That's more likely than for life to cure by chance. The probability of life forming by chance is less than a tornado passing through a junkyard and forming a Boeing 747. The probability of life forming by chance is less than billions of blind men. Actually, the calculation was 10 to the 50th blind men simultaneously solving Rubik's Cubes. First of all, have you ever worked with Rubik's Cube? Yes. I can't do it with my eyes open. Now, what's the chance of, of 10 of us in this room with our eyes open coming to the solution just at the same time? Well, here you have blind people who can't even see what's happening. This is pure random chances. 10 to the 50th, that's, that's so many more people than the entire world has. All these be blind people all come in the same chance. That's more likely to happen than a living cell forming by chance. Can you see how mathematically improbable that is? Life forming by chance is far less than an explosion in a print shop producing a dictionary. So what do mathematical probabilities show? Beyond doubt, what's the chance of them getting the first number correct? And I make this statement to conclude this chapter. Without a living God to create life, life could have never come into existence. The idea of by chance somehow non-living particles evolve into a living cell is a mathematical, I call it, impossibility. And this is one of the great proofs against evolution.